Right, so, well, we've got loads that are going on. So, very exciting. I'm pleased to say that Daniel joins me in the studio. Daniel, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. So, you're here, you're here from my birthplace, Newcastle upon Tyne. Hello, Jodie. Hello, Jodie. Well, yeah, it's good to meet you. Oh, yeah. I'm not great at the accent, unfortunately. I moved to Essex when I was four. No, you never lose the Geordie accent. It's true, but yeah. I'm a true Geordie. Now, true potential. Um, usually, when people go into business, the most important thing is actually, in my view, to take risk. Yes. Then you're serious. Because if you watch it on things like Dragon's Den and stuff, where they go, oh, well, I didn't put any of my own money in, that's always a bit of a, um, you know, an alarm bell. Yeah. So for you, you setting up this business with your family, talk to me about how you came to come up with the concept of doing this and what you were kind of doing before. The, the, the whole concept, I think you're absolutely right about taking a risk. Mm. I think you have to have your own capital. You've got to have your own skin in the game. Someone much wiser than me mm. has said before, and that's something which me and my other fel four fellow senior partners did. Yeah. We all left reasonably well-paid jobs for large organisations, mm. took the risk, and that's because we believed that actually there was a, a yearning need in the UK financial services space to provide something better for clients, uh, something which empowers them, something which makes them feel happy about investing, something which actually gives them financial freedom in the end. And there's no better way of taking a risk than putting your own money mm. in, putting the house up for a mortgage, yeah. telling those at home, we're all in here. It better work, otherwise you've it got nowhere work. to live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you put your, your homes on, on the line for this one. And what is the concept of true potential? Is it so someone like me, an external investor, could um, put in, say, loads of, I've got some old pensions from this, that and the other. I could consolidate them, go to you. You could invest them in some form of bond or some sort of yeah. managed fund. What, what's the deal? How does it work? I think you, you could call us, if you want to use industry parlance, mm. we'd be called wealth tech, but that's industry jargon. Um, Simply put, I think you described it really well. We're, we're dealing with members of the public who have investments, have pensions, or want to invest mm. or want to save for retirement. And we use a vertically integrated technology platform to bring all of the clients' money into one place. We give them advice on what's the right tax structure. We help them set a goal mm. for the medium and for the long term. Mm -hmm. And then we use our market-leading technology to allow a client at the top of an app or logging in their website to see how exactly well they're doing and to talk to us where they need more help, more mm -hmm. guidance. It's pretty efficient. I called them earlier today, actually, as it goes. <laughs> did you? <laughs> I did, actually. And they yeah. answered? Well, they did, they did. She, and she was very helpful. Thank she goodness. explained all the GIAs yeah. and the ISAs. And you've got, um, so are you, are you dealing mainly in stocks and shares, or are you dealing with cash? Because some people might think, well, because I, I mean, we're talking about ISAs. Is it a stocks and shares ISA? What's, what's the difference it, with some of the it, things it, that you're... It's a range. So we have you know, the portfolios are the money, where the money's invested. And, you know, even Justin, who you had just on there before we work with his previous firm, 7IM and a range of other fund managers where we manage £22 billion of clients' money wow. in stocks and shares, ISAs, into pensions, into general investment accounts and into bonds as well. The, the different tax wrappers really depend on what type of client they are, what their goals are and what their individual circumstances. And I, and I know that you're um, not only, you're quite philanthropic in that you look at the community as well yeah. around and you, you've, you've done, you, you work with um, some of the young people as well to teach them about um, actual money because we all learn to add up but we don't kind of learn mortgages and all that kind of stuff. I think this is a really important thing. It's about financial literacy going mm. back to school. And I think about myself in school, I only learned to budget, I only learned to invest because my mum and dad's told me it was the right thing to do and you, you speak to peers at work but not everybody has that opportunity not everybody has those kind of mentors so mm. to speak so we believe in putting our money where our mouth is we think that's a duty of private organizations as well to effectively help their communities level up so we invested four hundred thousand pounds last year for instance into initiatives such as the beacon of light at sunderland in the programs with the open university for finance programs um, and that's all about teaching people skills, giving people confidence, um, also teaching people to, to work and the, the, the benefit of working uh, from there as well. So those local initiatives really help people, I think, give everybody a chance to, to work and to feel like they're going to contribute. Because mm. a lot of people are sort of slightly put off with the idea because it seems too complicated, you know, and they don't understand that actually there are more ways of sort of investing and building your capital yeah. than just having it in the bank or just having an ISA. There are other things that people Th There's do. many things to do, but it's our confidence, it's education, it's a minefield. You know, you type in Google where to invest my money and what a, what a, well, what a set of searches that is. Mm. What I'd always recommend to anybody, though, is, is just start small. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start, it doesn't matter how you start, just start small, get the confidence, get the understanding, or speak to organisations like us. It's our duty to help. Um, it's our duty to empower people and, and hopefully make them feel in control. I always think there's no better 
freedom out there than having your own money, mm. uh, be it in the, in, the, in the present day or certainly as we move people towards retirement as well. And how did you take your business from just being an average business to where it is now? Because that is, that is some... We Something. stuck at it. So yeah. when, we, when we formed the business in 2007, this shows what do we know in the industry. That the, We had the 2008 uh, financial uh, crisis mm -hmm. as well. Yes, I remember so that. what a time to start a financial <laughs> services business. But going back to at the beginning, we were all in. We had no options. So we've always had a vision, which is if we put the end investor right at the heart of our thinking and do right by them, we know we'll win. So we've just always kept that in mind. Every day we've got up, we've worked at it, we've worked at it, we've kind of spread the message to as many people as possible. How do people know that if they put their money in your business that you'll still be around in a, uh, in a couple of years' time or whatever? Because obviously it's a long-term vision. It is. What guarantees, what checks and balances have you got in place to make sure that if you do go belly up, they're protected? Yeah, we have the, the normal government uh, protection with FSCS levy uh, and, and, and the protection there, but also behind the scenes with the regulations, something the FCA do in terms of custodian services, in terms of the protection there. There's a lot of belt and braces checks there to make sure that we run the business in a, in a not just a coherent fashion, but in a very solvent fashion. So, well. and, I, and I think you've probably still got your houses, but you've probably got bigger houses now. Well, the mortgage, <laughs> the mortgage has paid off <laughs> oh, again, well uh, luckily. Um, we've, 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 you know, I've, we've done well for our clients, we've done well for our advisors, but obviously as business people, we've done, done for, well for ourselves as shareholders yeah. as well. So everybody wins, which is the right way to run a business, I think. Well, fabulous to talk to you. I mean, it really is impressive that you, what you've done there. If people want to find out more, just uh, tell them where they can go to find They can out. go to uh, tplp.com. Well, listen, it's really good to talk to you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank really you. good to talk to you. That's Daniel Harrison. He's uh, from True Potential, a way that you can invest your money and make more money. Fabulous. Sounds great. I'm going to give it a go myself. I might as well. got nothing to lose.